Hello class, welcome to this lesson on 8.2. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the z-test for a mean. So uh, z-test today, and this is gonna be part one of the series. So we're gonna be doing a second part uh, next time. All right, so the essential question that we wanna address is, what is the specific statistical process for testing hypotheses involving means for large sample sizes using p-values. So we're gonna focus specifically on the p-value method in this lesson for the z-test. All right, so the learning goals are to find p-values, use p-values to test a mean, perform a z-test, find critical values in a normal distribution, find rejection regions, use rejection regions for a z-test. So again, we're gonna focus on the p-value method, then later we'll, uh, in the next part, we're gonna talk about how to do rejection regions and critical values. All right, so the vocab, which will be covered in part two, includes the z-test, rejection region, critical value. We're actually going to talk about the z-test, um, you know, what that is. But uh, the other two vocab terms will be covered in part two. All right, so the essential question, again, we uh, mentioned that earlier. So, uh, again, z-test. So what is the z-test? But before we get into that, we're going to review what we talked about in lesson 8.1. Okay, so remember that in a hypothesis test, we're uh, concerned about testing a claim about a parameter. Parameter is a population characteristic, and we use that by taking a sample, right, uh, which we, we, we randomly take that sample, and we calculate a test statistic, okay? A sample is a portion of a population, all right? Uh, so... So when we do hypothesis testing, we take samples. Now, when we do the direction uh, of a hypothesis test, the direction is based off of the alternative hypothesis. We mentioned that in the previous in 8.1, and that was also known as the research hypothesis. Our decision, though, is based off of the null hypothesis. All right, our conclusion is drawn based off of the original claim. However, now to make a decision, we compare the p-value to the level of significance alpha. So remember that if the p-value is less than alpha or equal to, we reject the null. If it's greater than, we fail to reject. All right, so reviewing how we found p-values. So we talked about how to find p-values in 8.1. The p-value depends on the direction of the test. And recall that when we uh, have a left-tailed test, this means that the p-value is the area in the left tail. And for z-scores, you need to look up the value in the z-table because that gives you the area to the left. For a right tail test, the p-value is the area in the right tail. For z-scores, you got to look up the uh, value in the z-table and then subtract from 1. For a two-tailed test, the p-value is twice the area of um, one of the tails. Okay, so twice the area of the left tail or twice the area in the right tail. Basically, it's a combination of both tails. So for the z-scores, you got to look up, the best way to do this is to look up the negative z-score in the table, look that up on the table, and then you double it, all right? So what is a z-test? So a z-test is a specific type of, uh, the z-test for a mean. So we're going to be talking about z-test for a mean for this, uh, for the intents of this lesson. So the hypothesis testing, remember, is concerned with parameters such as means, proportions, and variances. So the z-test for a mean is a statistical test that we'll be using specifically for the population mean. There is a z-test for proportions, and that will be covered in another lesson. So it can be used either when one of two conditions arises, okay? The first condition is that the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. If that, if that criteria is met, you can go ahead and proceed with the z-test for the mean. The next criteria is, um, or so it could be one or the other, okay? So either you can have a sample size greater than or equal to 30, or the population standard deviation could be known, sigma, and the population has to be normally distributed, okay? So you have to know sigma, and you have to know that the distribution is normal. Either that, or the sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so if the sample size is less than 30, then you have to know the standard deviation, sigma, and you have to know that it's normal. When n is greater than or equal to 30, um, keep in mind that you can substitute s for sigma. So when the sample size is large enough, 
you don't have to know the the sigma. You can find you can uh, use the s to substitute sigma. If the sample size is less than 30, you cannot substitute s for sigma. Okay, you have to uh, know the standard deviation. All right. So what is um, first off? We also assume that when we take a sample for a z test, that those samples are randomly taken. If a sample is not randomly taken, then that invalidates the results of the z test. So one thing that you got to do in, the, in any hypothesis test is calculate what is called the test statistic. The test statistic um, is basically, uh, so if we were to kind of summarize it, let me go ahead and uh, uh, summarize it, is basically a uh, value that you calculate based off of your sample um, for a specific test, okay? And that value you have to compare to the population you have to basically compare it to the null hypothesis essentially uh, once you compare it to that then um, you can use use that to determine whether you're going to reject or fail okay so the formula for the test statistic for the z test is this the z test is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n all right you may recall that this formula is actually uh, the formula for the cent from the central limit theorem. Uh, so this is actually 6.4. Remember that this formula is the central limit theorem formula um, that we talked about in 6.4. So what are the steps for the z-test? The steps for the p-value method for the z-test are very similar to what we just discussed with the hypothesis test. In fact, they're pretty much identical uh, with the exception of the calculating the test, the test statistic. Okay, so the first step, just like in any hypothesis test, is to write your claim and your statements mathematically. The second step is to identify the level significance. Then you got to sketch your curve, determine the direction of your test. In this case, our standardized distribution is the normal distribution because we're doing a z-test. For step four, we got to calculate the test statistic, which in this case is z-test. And then we're gonna, we want to mark it on our graph. Then we want to calculate the p-value for the p-value method. You can use this with the z-chart, the or you can use technology. All right, then you want to make a decision. The decision is based off of the null hypothesis. And then you want to do a conclusion, which is based off of the claim. All right, so those are your steps. So let's look at an example of how this works. So Papa John's Pizza claims they can deliver pizza within a delivery um, area in 30 minutes or less. 25 deliveries are randomly selected, and the sample mean is 28.8 minutes. Assume a population standard deviation of 4.1 minutes. At a level of significance of 1%, is there convincing evidence to support their claim? Assume the distribution is normal. So first off, we want to ask ourselves, can we actually use the z-test here? We need to determine if this satisfies the criteria. Okay. So the first step is, can we use the z-test for the mean? All right, so which criteria is satisfied here? Do we have a sample size greater than or equal to 30? Well, what's our sample size here? Well, they're saying that we have 25 deliveries. So that's my N. So clearly that's gonna be less than 30. So this, this criterion is not met. However, uh, we do know the second criterion, right? The second criterion is uh, the, the, um, the population standard deviation or sigma is 4.1 minutes. So that's my sigma, we do know that. And it says that you wanna assume that the distribution is normal. So we do know that the distribution is normal, the population is normally distributed. So this, uh, so we satisfy that criterion. So because that criterion is satisfied, we can go ahead and proceed with the z-test, all right? So now let's go ahead and do step one. Uh, so for step one, remember that we want to do our hypothesis statements, okay? So what's our claim? The claim was that they can deliver pizza within a delivery area in 30 minutes or less, okay? So uh, 30 minutes or less. So that's our claim. So uh, this means 30 minutes or less is less than or equal to 30. So this is less than or equal to 30. Now, since that is a, uh, and we're talking about uh, mean, so that's gonna be mu, so that's going to be a null hypothesis because that's a statement of equality, okay? So that's going to be in our null less than or equal to 
has an equal sign, it's null. All right, now it doesn't say what the researcher thinks of the study or anything like that. So H1 is going to be the complement of this. So it's going to be the opposite. So this, this time it's going to be greater than 30. All right, so now we know that this is our claim. And because uh, it's greater than 30, in step three, we're going to determine the direction. Okay. So step two, what is our alpha? You get to decide this. However, the problem already decides it for you. Okay. So it says use a level significance of 1%. So alpha is 0 0.01. Okay. So that was my alpha is 1%. Now the direction of the test depends on your alternative hypothesis. So since, the, since it's greater than, we're going to use the right tailed test. All right, the test statistic, we got to actually calculate that. So remember, that's going to be Z stat. Okay, so Z or Z test. So Z test is going to be using that formula. X bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. Okay, so X bar, what is X bar? Well, it's X bar is the sample mean. So here it says the sample mean is 28.8 minutes. So that's my X bar. The mu is the mu from the hypothesis test, okay, so, or from, yeah, from the null hypothesis or the claim, which is going to be 30, right? So the mu is 30, and x bar is 28.8. So we got 28.8 minus 30 over sigma. What was the population standard deviation? Well, they said it was 4.1 minutes, okay? And then we took a, a sample that says 25 deliveries, so that's my n. Okay, so we have uh, 4.1 divided by square root of 25. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate that on the, do that on the calculator real quick and see what we get. So the numerator is going to be, this is going to be a negative z-score. All right, so the z-score is going to be negative 1.46 to two decimal places, okay? So that's my z-test. So then what we want to do is we want to find the p-value, but we're, let's label this on our uh, curve first. So we know it's a right-tailed test. So we're going to label our z-test on here. So we got negative 1.46, that's going to be around here. All right, now, since this is a right tail test, right, um, th this means that we got to shade the area to the right, okay? So we have all of this. All right. Okay, so now, now that we have uh, the, uh, the curve with the label, we're going to go ahead and find the p-value. Remember, to find the p-value for a right tail test, you find the area on the right tail. To find the area on the right tail using the z-chart, you look up the value in the z-chart, subtract it from 1. So let's look up negative 1.46 on the z-chart. I went ahead and got this for your reference. So negative 1.46. Here, here. So our area is 0 0.0721. So that's this area right here, 0 0.0721. That's the area on the left side. So to find the area on the right side, you got to do 1 minus. Okay, so that means it's going to be 0 0.9 0 0.279. Okay, that's going to be our p-value. 0.9279. All right, so what's our decision then? So our decision is going to be uh, where you compare the p-value to alpha, okay? So here, the p-value is actually uh, greater than alpha. Remember, the alpha is 0 0.01. So since it's greater than, this means we uh, fail to reject, okay? So we fail to reject here. So I'm going to use FTR, fail to reject the null hypothesis. <clears throat> All 
All right. So now what's our conclusion? Since we failed to reject, this means that we don't have enough evidence, okay? So, uh, so there is not enough evidence. If we reject, that means we have enough evidence. And since our claim belongs to our null hypothesis, this means that we, we say we use the word reject, okay? So we said there's not enough evidence to reject the claim. Reject the claim that the mean delivery time, so that Papa John's uh, mean delivery time is 30 minutes or less. So we don't have enough evidence to show that it's not, that that's not the case. Okay, it doesn't mean that that's true. It's just saying that uh, we don't have enough evidence to overthrow that claim. Okay. All right. So let's look at another example. According to a STAT article, health article, the average age of people who develop acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS after testing positive for the coronavirus is 49. You suspect that this average is lower, maybe because you've seen people um, your age or younger than 49 getting the virus. So you decide to survey 100 people afflicted with the disease from the National Health Database. From your sample, you find that the average age is 47 with a standard deviation of 7.1. Is this result statistically significant at the 5% level of significance? All right, so we said it says that the average age, the claim here is that the average age is 49. So that means that the average mu equals 49. So that's my claim. Now that claim belongs to my um, null hypothesis. All right, so we have here, first off, let's see if we can do a Z test. Can we do a Z test? Well, let's look at the sample size. It says that you decide to survey 100 people. So this means my sample size is 100. This is definitely greater than 30 or equal to 30. So check. So because we satisfied that criterion, we can go ahead and use the z-test. Also keep in mind that we're doing it for a mean. If this were a percentage, like for example, the percentage of people who develop the coronavirus is 5%, you can't use a z-test for a mean for that because that's a percent or a proportion. You got to use it for a mean for this lesson, okay? So for using the Z test for a mean, it's a mean, and the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. All right, so now let's, we said that the claim is that the mu is equal to the mean age is 49, 49 years, which means now you suspect, it says you suspect that this average is lower, which means that it has to be less than, right? So we're gonna say mu is less than 49, okay? Don't go ahead and do the opposite. If they give you more information about what the researcher thinks or you as the researcher think, then you need to make sure that you include that in your alternative, okay? All right, so it says that the alpha is 5%, so that's gonna be 0 0.05. All right, now since it's a left-tailed test, that means that we're looking at the left side, uh, which means that the, that the direction is, uh, well, because the alternative is less than I mean, then it's a left-tailed test, okay? So this indicates that it's left-tailed. All right, so it's left-tailed. Let's go ahead and calculate the test statistic. So that's gonna be Z test because we're doing a Z test. All right, so remember X bar minus mu, okay? We know mu is 49 from the claim, right? So what's X bar? It says from your sample, you find that the average age is 47. So that's my X bar. The standard deviation here, that's your sample standard deviation. That's not your population. So this is S, not the sigma, uh, because that's from your sample, right? So remember that if your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, you can substitute sigma for S, okay? So because this is the case, you can use S instead of sigma. So you don't have to use sigma for here. You can if you know it, but if you don't have it, you can use S instead, which is which is great because it's easier to find S than it is to find sigma, okay? 
All right, uh, so now we know what S is, or sigma, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and write out the formula. Instead of using sigma, uh, we're gonna use S, okay? So I'm gonna write out the formula so you guys can see. So we have X bar minus uh, mu divided by, instead of using sigma here, I'm gonna use S over square root of N, okay? So there's the difference right there, right? We can use S here. So you said uh, from your research it was 47, and the claim was that it was, the hypothesis was that, was that it was 49 over, what was the standard deviation? Standard deviation is 7.1, and you took it for 100 people. So we're going to go ahead and calculate this uh, Z test. So when you do this, you get about negative 2.82 to two decimal places. So that means, so we know it's a left tail test. So we have negative 2.82. So that's over here. It's actually closer to negative three than it is to negative two. All right, so that's my Z test and it's a left tail test. So I'm gonna shade the area to the left so it's a very small area so since it's a left tail test we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and look up the value from the z chart and then that's going to be my p value now let's say that this is a two tail test if this were a two tail test you would look up the value in the z chart here and then you would double it that's for a two tail test however we're looking at a left tail test okay so we're just going to look it up so we got negative 2.8 Two. So it looks like it's going to be 0 0.0024 uh, from the Z chart. Okay, 0 0.0024, and that's going to be my area. So this area is 0 0.0024, and that's my p value. So my p value is. One zero zero two four. All right, so now we're going to do our decision. So we know that point that our p value is less than or equal to alpha. Remember, our alpha is um, 0 0.05. So we know it's less than 0 0.05. All right, so this is definitely less than or equal to 0 0.05. So that means that we reject. All right, so what's our conclusion? Since we reject, that means that we have enough evidence. There is enough evidence. And now our claim belongs to our null hypothesis, so we're still going to use the word reject. There is enough evidence to reject uh, the claim. Uh, the claim that, and then this is where you insert your claim. What is the claim? So insert the claim that... Uh, in this case, um, if we look at the original problem, the claim that the uh, average age of people who develop ARDS from the coronavirus is 49, okay? So that the average age of ARDS patients with coronavirus is 49. All right, guys, those are our two examples of a hypothesis test. So uh, for a z-test specifically, a z-test for a mean for large samples, the p-value method. Okay, so we're going to, uh, in another lesson, we're going to talk about the z-value for small samples instead, uh, instead of you know, for a large sample. But in the next lesson, we're going to actually talk about, instead of doing the p-value, we're going to look at another way of doing this z-test for means for large samples. All right, I hope you uh, took something from this lesson, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.